So one of the things that I have always struggled with is other people's perception of my own authenticity. And what that means is how other people's perception of you like influence how they treat you, what they think about your intentions, even if they'll hire you for a job, if they'll be a good partner in a relationship because other people's perception of you really colors, can really color their own behavior. And there's nothing we can really do about that. It's taken me a really long time to understand how little I can really do about other people's perception of me. But I wanna talk about this because I think a lot of people like me may go through this. So I would describe myself as an honest person and a person who just has really, I won't call them pure intentions, but just like black and white intentions. And now that I'm at my age, one thing that I've learned is that <clears throat> a lot of people don't operate with black and white intentions or good intentions <laughs> like at all and i know that might sound really crazy for a 41 year old woman to say but it has taken me a really long time to understand the depths at which a lot of people do not operate with clear intentions going to therapy also helped me understand that a lot of people also don't know themselves well enough to even understand their own intentions. So you can have a lot of subconscious things going on that affect um, how you see yourself and therefore how you see the world and therefore how you operate in the world. And then that can color also how you view other people and their intentions. And unfortunately, in my experience, a lot of the experience that I have had with other people, to be honest, has been uh, really discouraging, hurtful, um, saddening, depressing. <laughs> a lot of the interactions that I, that I have with other people, they don't feel, it's rare that I feel like that my energy is met when I am interacting with another person, that is reciprocated, that is the same. So because of that, and also having so many people call me weird or tell me that I like am weird or intimidating, I've been called intimidating a lot. Um, because I've had so many interactions with people that were unpleasant, disappointing, all these things, all the ways I just described them. I have, as a way to protect myself, I have definitely developed a mask. And I feel like my mask is necessary, but it's not something that I enjoy putting on, that I enjoy acting <laughs> acting within the confines of. But if, I mean, I think a lot of people do it at work. You might do it with your family and friends, but as I'm getting older, I am tired. I don't wanna do it anymore and it sucks. And I'm becoming more and more aware of that. But recently, I met a woman who um, I'm doing some work with her and she does not seem to really wear a mask. And this is the most amazing thing to me. I met her and I immediately liked her, which is also rare. <laughs> Most of the time when I meet other people, it's not that I don't like them, it's that I am guarded. 
And people, even people who have known me for a long time will say, you seem mysterious, you seem guarded. Um, that is a that is a defense mechanism. I'm, and I'm completely aware of that, and it is intentional, like without question. But when I meet people who don't seem to operate like that, but who also seem to be genuinely nice, like I consider myself to be on the inside, even though. I've learned that sometimes acting that out makes people, they have their own stuff going on and you try to be genuinely nice to somebody and care about them and they cannot accept it and they certainly cannot reciprocate it. So meeting a person who seems genuinely nice, like, and that's it, like I want to be in my real life, in my day-to-day -day life, it has been really eye-opening. It has been really eye-opening. It When I was interacting with her, the way she talked about caring about other people, caring about the people that work for her, caring about her friends and her family, it just seemed so genuine and pure. It didn't seem like she was trying to hide from me, a stranger, that she had emotions, that she was a caring person, that she cared about her job, that things that she were she was going through, um, you know, was hurting her. She just was so like emotionally free with with me, a stranger, and that was so beautiful. When I was talking to her. I had to be really aware to not just stare at her because I was like, damn, this person seems incredibly genuine and open. And I started to wonder about the levels at which I mask and I perform because I have been disappointed and hurt so often in my interpersonal relationships. And I started to wonder like, how has this person that I'm talking to made it through life? Because she's similar age to me. I would say she's in her forties. I don't know for sure. But how has this person made it this far in life and like still be able to be open and honest and like genuinely nice and seem emotionally free and emotionally vulnerable with a complete stranger. How, what has her life been like? And I don't know the answer to that, but this inter interaction made me think about my own behavior, my own life, and think about how many times my interpersonal relationships have hurt me or disappointed me to the point where now I have this very intentional protective wall around me and my vulnerability and honestly how I really am as a person. So I just want, if you're going through this or if you have this same experience with other people i just wanted to make this video to let you know like you are not alone and i don't know if you know like i don't know if i'll ever be the kind of person who can be really vulnerable like with a stranger because i have been really disappointed with um so many interpersonal relationships throughout my entire life. I really have been called weird, strange, Oreo, intimidating. Some are too smart. When I was younger, <laughs> I really heard the too smart stuff like uh, so many times I can't count. So I have had so many interactions with people who basically 
didn't like me because of something that I I inherited, like my personality, like I don't really control it or my level of intelligence. I didn't, you know, I didn't ask <laughs> for any of this. So I don't know if I could ever be like, is it even possible for me to get to the point where I'm not really masking all the time with other people? And that makes me sad, but I do have a little bit of hope because I've met this woman who surely there's no way that her life has been so amazing and perfect. And it's, you know, she's just only a product of the things that have happened to her. I am not only a product of the things that have happened to me, but I have made a conscious choice to even now, like remove myself from situations that are hurtful or interpersonal relationships that are not reciprocal. And I think that's, a, that's, that's a still a good step because doing that means I have space to interact with people like this, like this really amazing lady that I met, that I'm working with. I have space to make this video. I have space to be vulnerable in other ways. I have space to even be aware of my behavior and what I might want to change about it. So it's still a good look to not, you know, to not to not participate in relationships that are not reciprocal or don't, you know, don't feed me. So that's still good. But will I Will I ever, can I revert back? Like, will I ever be able to be more of myself? Maybe, I hope so. I want to be. I have awareness of what I want to be and what I am now. So I hope so. But if you're like me, you're going through this, Especially if you're younger than me, man, listen to what I'm saying. Um, but if you're like me, you're going through this. I just wanted to make this video and say like, hey, somebody else is out there like you. If you are that person that feels incredibly misunderstood and you have taken all of that, those times where you felt misunderstood and those that pain and you've made it made it into an armor like I have you are not alone and I think that people like us we can we can somehow surround ourselves with people who are like us and at least expose ourselves to more soulful interactions so we can revert back to who we really are. Those sweet, misunderstood kids. The sweet child inside of us that we are honestly, the armor is just to, trying to protect that little kid in you that was hurt so many times and who grew up to be the adult who now just tries to protect you. So that's all I think this that's all I have to say. I hope you meet a person who is like a better version of you or a different version of you who inspires you to see where you can maybe start to put down your own armor. Okay. I think that's it. Love you. Bye.